Hi, and this is the ninth part of the Sly 4 Any% speedrunning tutorial series. In this part, we'll cover the second half of episode 4 and the jobs, short supply, shell shocked heart, heart target, and operation mousetrap. Let's get right into it and select Murray in the safe house because the job short supply awaits him. From the load, you want to hold 1 o'clock, so the same direction that you held when you're going to eye in the sky. But here, we're not going to go to the catapult. We're just going to go left. And on this wooden bridge, jump over the side fence. And run straight to the trigger. Now, EP4 has two Murray jobs, short supply and operation mousetrap. And these Murray jobs are the only jobs in episode 4 that have a shock talk job trigger. Both of them have it, so when you enter a job as Murray in episode 4, mash circle instead of start. And after that, mash start in order to skip a cinematic right afterwards. So you spawn like this, we gotta go to the tavern. Now intuitively you might think that the optimal route jumps over the castle walls. That's not the fastest route. Instead you wanna hold 2 o'clock from the load and use this catapult that's on top of this platform after jumping on the trampoline. Then go right. And this is how you reach the trigger. So as we know with Murray you can't mash circle when approaching triggers because otherwise he'll just do the stomp move. So here just press the circle button right after you pass this torch on the right because the far edge of the trigger area is located right here. Like so. So just like when entering tavern and shopping spree, mash start after the load in order to skip a cinematic. So the tavern section as Murray is probably the most inconsistent part in this entire episode in terms of speedruns. A lot of randomness and uh, different outcomes involved here. So the objective is to throw a total of six guards into three of these uh, stirrers. We don't actually know how guards spawn in this room, but through testing and observations, at least we have a, some sort of clue regarding it. One of the things we have noticed is that the guard spawns are related to how quickly and how much movement you do in this interior. So the strats we do is to go to this point and two of those porcupines will spawn behind me. So after you see two red dots in the compass in the bottom right corner, turn around maybe single jump backwards, and you actually can go a bit too fast in this job in order to not get the optimal guard spawns, so just play this safe because the last thing you want to do is something like this, where the guard dies and you did not get a hit on the steerers, because every wasted guard spawn loses a lot of time. Like, this is the worst scenario that can happen, you just killed both of the guards. So here, pick the other porcupine up, throw him quickly before that other guy hits you. Taking damage is just fine. And then this rat will attack you. So indeed, if you go too fast here, the rat will spawn. So if you don't see the rat spawn, just go a bit more towards this corner right here and the rat should always spawn. If the rat spawned early, it's always gonna attack you. So... Punch him once and throw him into that steroid. Like also, this is why you punch the rat. Then stay on the side of this edge, pick up this guard and jump to hit the steroid a second time. Another porcupine should spawn behind you. So these are the optimal spawns. So just pick him up from behind you and throw it to the final stirrer. And then another optimal spawn happened right after that on the right. Like this. This is basically the best you can do in the tavern. Majority of the backups involves you just simply running around the tavern a bit more. Now a guard did not spawn behind me, instead two guards spawned over here. So the first four spawns are pretty consistent, but after that the fifth and sixth one can be pretty much uh, whatever. The most common scenario is this one right here. Pro tip is to look on that compass throughout this entire section for those red dots to know where the guards actually are. 
here I once again got the optimal fifth guard spawn. And then the end of the tavern is an unskippable cutscene that leads into a load. After the load you're gonna get the same spawning location as in shopping spree when going to the shoemakers and we're gonna use that same spawning location to go to the exact same location again. So you literally do this movement twice identically in this episode <laughs> to this same place. And even the early part of this interior section is identical to the one in Shopping Spree. Except that here the cutscene trigger is on that top platform and not ahead of it on the other side. So just uh, be ready to press the start button instantly when Sly lands on that platform after the strats that I already explained in Shopping Spree segment, which were single jump circle boost jump and then hit the trigger and skip cinematic and the intended strat is to shoot an arrow here and there's a checkpoint on this platform so you always have to visit this platform regardless the next checkpoint is located over there and the intended route would be to shoot another arrow and walk on a rope but we don't have to do that there's a little skip here little exploit that does save the time that shooting the arrow takes so it definitely saves several seconds and it's it's pretty easy, so I do recommend this for beginners too. Basically, the hack trigger reaches below this platform. As you can see, I can interact with the hack trigger. I think the trigger is already possible much lower, as you can see. But if you want to get it from lower grounds, then you basically have to just mash circle really hard. And if you don't get it with the first jump by mashing, then just jump even higher. And here in this corner, you should be able to get it consistently. Not that intense mashing even required. So how I set this up is that I run to this point and then double jump directly towards the back corner over there and mash circle. And the result looks like this. We can actually skip shooting this first arrow too, but it only saves about one second. Doing this strat looks very similar to the crawl skip movement and paragliding, where we would paraglide straight over here, but a reminder is that we still have to hit that checkpoint on top of that platform. So in order to do that, just cane jump to that platform and get the checkpoint. I cannot address this enough how important it is to remember to hit that checkpoint. The amount of runners that have at some point just simply forgot about that checkpoint and ran to this hack trigger is outstanding. It has happened to me too. And then the runners are just gonna jump over here under the hack trigger like oh, why am i not getting this skip uh, the skip sucks bro it's too hard when all they really had to do was to hit that trigger so the section from start to finish hold up from the load park light over here single jump circle boost and do a cane jump jump on top of the basket park light down go left and do the skip strand now this will be the third spark runner hack in the game and this is pretty straightforward as well a couple of early wire swap and that's about it so just turn your controller directly right from the top do an early swap here early swap not required on that second one and these cycles are once again pretty much random there i got a very good cycle on the first one but pretty bad on the second one so just manage with those cycles and you're good to go Pretty quick and straightforward hack and once again do the controller flip strap with the end trigger and we're just gonna move on. After this hack there will be a load as normal but we're still gonna spawn inside and there will be one last little exchange with Sly and this is an unskippable cutscene because it ends with a load too so just don't mash start after the load because the cutscene is unskippable. After this load instead, we're gonna spawn as Galeth. So every one of the three characters has the same spawning location in this job. And with Galeth, our objective is to go to the bakery. So just hold 11 o'clock from the load. 11 o'clock, that's it. Run straight. Don't run to these bricks. It's kind of awkward. And then go right and hard left by mashing circle in order to enter the bakery. Just like in Shopping Spree, the load to the bakery is pretty short, although this time there won't be a cutscene when you enter the uh, center room. 
there is a hook, and you're gonna catapult from that hook, but you can single jump circle boost on that hook after you reach this wooden platform on the floor when having an optimal movement, so like running besides this oven. So just hold up from the load, smash this, single jump circle boost, catapult, and you gotta wait a bit until a cutscene spawns, and when you see that the Binoculum cutscene has started, that's when you wanna pause the game in order to skip a cinematic. The shape of this room is an eight-cornered symmetric shape with three power supplies and then the exit on the fourth corner. This section can be very scary. Take this as safely as possible. You can lose a lot of time the later you fail in this section. It is equally fast to go from either the left or the right side, but at least in runs I have gone from the right side and even the cycles are pretty much identical. Regardless of the side, you're just gonna do the movement mirrored. Given that you have optimal lines of movement, you can single jump circle boost on these hooks right after you pass this metal section on the floor. Like so. And surprisingly, the cycles here are not RNG, but they are dependent on your pace. The first two cycles... This cycle is consistent, where the lasers move like this. The second cycle is consistent as well where the lasers are on the floor, but the cycles do depend on how many times you have entered that same stage of this section. Like, in example, the first time I trigger the first laser cycle, the cycle is always gonna be the same, but if I take damage, and I have to redo the thing from the start, this is why failing here loses a lot of time, and now I'm gonna do it the second time, this time, the cycles can be just kind of whatever. This is why it's important to do this job in one go. And if you fail, I do recommend you to just restart checkpoint. Now the second section, consistent cycles. You just gotta do a two double jump and the second time around also these cycles can be just whatever. And then the final part is extremely monkey as like these cycles are hazardous and can be pretty random. So what I recommend you to do is to just wait for a couple of seconds or one second to look around where the cycles are and then make the decision to start running towards the end trigger for the job. So from start to finish, if you go from right, single jump circle boost and hold left when you're dropping down. Another single jump circle boost, hold left, single jump instantly when you land, and a second one. And then the end, turn the camera, look around, yeah, the coast is clear, then just run to the end. Now this is an unskippable cutscene at the end of the job, and that's it for short supply. After the load, mash X to select Sly, and here, this is your last chance to buy Trigger Bomb before buying it become slower overall, so if you did not have enough coins after duty calls, but you have now, then get the trigger bomb because it's gonna save a lot of time in this job. And the job in question indeed is Shell Shocked Heart. From the load there are two directions you can hold. If you don't have rail sprint, hold 1 o'clock and do the same kind of movement as you did with Galeth when going to Eye in the Sky job trigger, so use this catapult. But instead, right after passing this corner, do a single jump circle boost to the right on this rope and then just paraglide to the job trigger. But if you have rail sprint, instead hold 2 o'clock from the load and you want a single jump circle boost on this rope when you reach this part of the shadow. It's round and kinda circular in a way, so when you get on top of this, execute jump and then just uh, run on the rope. And this route only with rail sprint, otherwise, nope. Mash start when you hit the job trigger in order to skip cinematic. And this is a lengthy auto scroller right here. We have to follow Black Knight, so what you basically want to do if you want to have a little snack break during the run, then just wait until the Black Knight turns right and go over here. And you can stay on this location for the entire auto scroller. But if you want to get the pause optimally at the end of this auto scroller, then just go on top of the blacksmith shop and press start instantly when the black knight turns right. And skip a cinematic. You spawn as Bentley. A very quick part of movement here, so we can skip 
this uh, bouncy platform and jump straight to the roof. The trigger area for this next trigger is quite huge, so you'll trigger it if you were just mashing circle pretty much instantly when you have landed on the platform. So hold one o'clock from the load, adrenaline burst on the ground, double jump on this platform and straight to the roof. That was an unskippable cutscene that entered a load. Now we're gonna get to the nitty gritty of this job, the Bentley interior sections. So from the load you want to mash start in order to skip cinematic and let's start the platforming. If you try to go optimally this job has probably the hardest platforming as Bentley in the game, maybe even harder than in Ice Ice Bentley. It's not that difficult without gadgets but if you have AB and trigger bomb then combining all all this tech together with the basic movement and stuff is pretty challenging. So a kind of annoying thing with this job is that the camera shakes when the Black Knight walks. So even the camera angle is not completely stationary all the time. And also one other kind of unfortunate thing with this job is that we can actually skip around many of these uh, traps. Like I'm gonna just show. With invincibility frames I just skipped through that laser. The Black Knight keeps moving, but other triggers, like this, will not load. The triggers are chained with these devices, so you gotta hit them all. So let's start. From the load, hold up right in order to place a bomb on that blockade, blow it up with a trigger bomb and AB. Then the next uh, trigger bomb will already connect to that device. When you see these planks on the ground change from uh, going vertically to horizontally from Bentley's point of view and throw the bomb and keep running but not bursting through it and you should be able to blow up the bomb right before you would die to that laser wall. And here the next bomb throw will connect when you stand on top of this final part of the platform. So throw the bomb and jump over the gap and blow up the bomb right before you land so that you won't get killed by the lasers like this. And then just AB to the end trigger. Now since all of you won't have trigger bomb and some of you are just gonna do episode runs anyway, then what you wanna do after throwing that first bomb is to go standing over here and open the binoculum and when you see that the bomb has blown up, shoot, do not shoot it too quickly. Even these coins have hitboxes and you'll take damage from the recoil of your explosive ammo, but that's the only non-trigger bomb strat I'm gonna show you in this job. Otherwise, without trigger bomb, you're just gonna do the same thing and shoot as many of these devices as you can with uh, explosive ammo. So here is the full first Bentley section, so pay very close attention to what I'm doing here, how I'm using AV, how I'm using trigger bombs, and the end trigger for that section is located once again on top of the wooden planks, and when you hit that, pause the game in order to skip cinematic and mash circle from this load. You are literally in the hack trigger area after you spawn. So just mash circle from the load. This is an unskippable little cutscene here that leads into a load and this will be the fourth system cracker hack in the game. So you see that there's a speeder code station right in front of you. So literally hold exactly straight up from the load. Do a loop over this trigger. You should get going through this uh, pink gem wall after just four Panzer Code shots. So instantly after you spawn as the Panzer Code, aim your right stick towards the pink gem wall. And while the second or third of your Panzer Code shots is loading, already adjust the cannon to aim to the trigger. Since even though the Panzer Code shoots really slowly and moves really slowly, the cannon on top of it actually moves super fast. After this section, go left, go far left, where the speeder code station is once again located. And you might remember from your casual playthroughs and something like that, that this section was very annoying. More and more of those enemy drones will spawn, and if they hit your loop while you were doing it, it's gonna break. Although it's gonna insta-kill one of those drones, it's gonna break regardless and more drones are gonna spawn. So the optimal strat here is that after you spawn in the speeder code mode, 
kill all four of the enemy's drones as fast as he can, or technically speaking, have as little time as possible between the first and the fourth kill. This way you'll get the most amount of time to do the double loop. And after you've done the loop, get the shell code and the data key and uh, potentially shoot these blue gems on your way. Here, even though you don't see that the hacking drone has switched to the speeder code mode, you can both hear it and feel it if you have dual shock on your controller because it's gonna vibrate after you switch on the speeder code. So instantly after you know that you have switched on the speeder code, you wanna change from holding up to holding right. So from start to finish, this hack is extremely short, optimally, but it does have a lot of stuff in it. Just wait out the cycle, it can be too optimal to bonk on it. So after you hit the speeder coin, aim downwards to the hacking drones. Now that was very slow, but I was still able to make it. So you don't have to be like super optimal in order to get that early double loop. But of course it does help, this is a speedrun after all. This is the end trigger for the hack and it leads into a load. After the load you don't have to skip any cutscenes like that or anything like that. You're just gonna spawn as Bentley like this. And let's go over the second Bentley section. So after you pass by this corner, instantly equip the binocucum, like okay. You can do this with a trigger bomb too, but even I do not recommend it. It does save like half a second. You're gonna lose that time save if you try to do it precisely and try to get it first try. So don't bother with it. So hold up and A, B straight from the load and after passing this corner just equip by Nakucom and get past the laser floor. Now after you have shot the device, the cycles here are consistent, so what you can do is just do two single jumps to cross it. But since the lasers are insta-kill, instead I'm gonna advise you to go safe and use the hover pack here. So after passing by the section, do an AB. And here, the intended strat is obviously to just shoot that device, but as we can see, can auto-target that with the trigger bomb and it's not even difficult as long as you are hugging this fence and you are clearly on the right side of these wooden planks then just simply hold L1 and it should always auto-target the device so what to do after the trigger bomb has landed on the device and then keep going and jump on top of the lasers but do the double jump input with X and the bomb explosion input with R2 at the same time so that obviously you won't die like so hover past this platform you do need almost a full gadget meter in order to pass this gap then just keep rolling and depending on how much you have uh, juice judge based on that when you want to start your ab if i have a full gadget meter i can pretty much start my ab all the way from over there but with little less that won't be the case so then here is the second bentley section in its entirety so at the end of the section a new cutscene trigger is located on top of a platform that is a bit wider than the normal platforms where you're running in these segments so when the railing starts to widen up a bit that's when you want to anticipate the start button press and once again skip cinematic when you hit this trigger and exactly the same thing applies here for the second hack of this job you already spawn in the trigger area so once again just mash circle and you'll instantly enter the hack now this hack will be the fourth alter ego hack in the game and the second alter ego hack in this episode and this is just your standard alter ego hack there's actually nothing new in this hack that you haven't seen before even the boss at the end is just a standard boss that spawns on the right side of the screen facing to the left just like in something's fishy and episode 2 operational already so you know just don't be bad and get the early kill easy there are my insanely in-depth advices for this particular section okay let's move on after the load hold up you're gonna spawn right where you left off and this third and final bent section is by far the trickiest and hardest so hold up from the load and a b instantly and when you get past this corner throw a trigger bomb after triggering it 
wait for these cycles. With this next device you have to disable, you could throw a trigger bomb on it since the bomb throw mechanic auto targets uh, that device already right after you have passed this corridor. But I guess Sanzoro made a, some sort of uh, clever mechanism here. I don't know if it's intentional, but the bomb is not actually on that device right now. Now you see nothing happen, and I can do this over and over, but it just won't blow up. So what you want to do is to not obey the auto-aim. Just either throw the bomb on the right side or the left side or right in front of that device, since that way it actually connects. The intended route indeed would go from the left. But we don't need to do that. The next device is located behind this blockade and the intended route would also blow that up with a bomb first. But actually, with an explosive ammo, the explosion range reaches the device behind this first obstacle. So what you want to do is to just shoot towards it or slightly left from the bomb icon. If you shoot directly to the bomb icon, well, that works too. And after that, just hover past the gap. Here, you can do some extended hovering, but optimally, you just want to go to the left side of it and uh, have some speed, and you should make it through with just uh, one hover input. And then on to the final section. Now, it is possible to destroy the last two devices, both of them, with a trigger bomb all the way from over here, but that is super hard and super inconsistent, so don't even try it. For everyone learning the speedrun for the first time in depth, I recommend you to shoot these devices with explosive ammo, and here Binocucom might auto-target that rat over there, so be cautious of that. So after shooting that trigger AB over here, do the same thing, and here just like with the early device hit previously, the explosive ammo trigger zone reaches quite far, so you can basically aim to the ceiling and it'll still connect. Same thing here, that was pretty far but it still worked, and then just Maybe to the end, the end trigger is right here. So finally, here is the third section in its entirety. But here I'm already gonna give away a fact that there is a pretty difficult skip at the end of the job. And it's actually a Binocucom cutscene cancel strat that cancels a certain transition in the ending cutscene completely, saving 5 seconds in the process. The easier version of this skip first shoots this device, then lines Bentley directly straight with this railing on the side of that laser fence and just goes past it by jumping on the railing. Now normally you can't stand on these railings for longer than just a brief moment, so the X inputs you're gonna do, the angle you're holding, your positioning are all very precise and even if it's slightly tilted to either left or right then you're gonna fall down and fail the job or either die instantly to the laser, so in action. So just as you are about to land again, use the hover pack in order to slow down Bentley's falling speed to more controllable level. And after getting past the lasers, go on the right side of this platform, hug the railing, so that you have gone just past that wall with collision because there's no collision here anymore. Equip the Binocucom and shoot the final trigger. This'll skip the transition where Black Knight moves to its end destination. This trick is uh, viable when you set it up, but if you try to do it without setup quickly, the end result might not be that great. And shooting the final device while being in the Binocucom animation is the critical part of the skip. You will not get the Binocucom cutscene cancel here if you just simply blow that up with a trigger bomb. Now there is a one more faster alternative with trigger bomb that I don't recommend anyone to do, but if there's some crazy person out there who wants to be a human task, then go for a strat that doesn't even shoot this device with a explosive ammo, and instead tries to jump on the railing all the way from here. Now, this is real shit. <gasps> I made it past with trigger bomb after you have know, passed the section. Go to the center and almost 
to the point where the platform loses collision. And then just throw the trigger bomb, open, and there we go. This is the end of the job, an unskippable cutscene, but you know, just don't do that strat, please. That hardcore version, I mean. Going for the easier version is uh, recommended if you try to aim for top times. Now, this is one of the four jobs that do not have a job complete animation, so instead it's just gonna fade out. And after the load, there's gonna be a cinematic that you want to skip by mashing circle button upon entering safe house. And after skipping that, keep mashing X in order to pick up Sly. And the next job that we're gonna go to is called Hard Target. The job trigger is located on top of the bell tower on the right of the safe house. So from the load, hold up and do the same kind of movement to the catapult as in shopping spree and cane swipe. And this time jump to the catapult end of this catapult or you can also jump in the middle or basically directly dead center of this catapult and this should give you the outcome we're looking for which is to land on this specific point on the castle wall. After the bad landing animation has ended you want to single jump circle boost on the rope. After that, do two quick double jump circle boosts, double jump circle boost on the rope, and then on this bouncy pole. Now here, when you hold to the direction of the job trigger, it's common for you to ledge grab this platform. And if you have rail sprint here, after the single jump circle boost, keep rail sprinting until you see that the rope and then the right back corner of this tower exactly this point collide so it would be right as i jumped there you get what i mean that's when you want to double jump circle boost on the rope with rail sprint so starting from the catapult Rush start after you hit the chop trigger in order to skip a cinematic and you spawn as Galeth on top of the platform where we used to catapult in short supply as Murray and we're gonna use that catapult again. So in this Galeth section we have to collect three fire bulbs and you can actually do them in the order of your choosing but when looking at their locations the routing is pretty clear regarding that taking that northern firebolt first is by far the fastest route and the routing here states that taking this more southern firebolt as the second one is faster so from the load you want to hold left but also single jump instantly when the load completes this way you will jump on a catapult and then it's common that galeth will get that kind of long slide that screeches your momentum to a halt but avoid this by jumping immediately when you land. Ignore the guards. Jump over the ridge from the left side. Here you can single jump circle boost. After you have completely passed the imaginary line between the saber tooth dummy post and this pile of plants, like so. So around to the first fireball from start to finish. Now, guards can be annoying here, sometimes they might cock you, but it's not that common when you have optimal play. Now, these are unskippable cutscenes, you can't skip these, so don't even try to, and even if you could, you won't get a checkpoint from those. If you restart checkpoint before collecting all three firebolts, you're gonna end back with zero. Now, there are two flashlight guards now. Let's see how it affects my play here. So hold 11 o'clock after this animation. Single jump circle boost on the railing. Now to ferret out two more. And as you can see, the guards were no issue. Keep running straight, break these objects the on your way. And here, you want to double jump circle boost on this rope. Basically, when your location is about right here, then aim your circle boost directly to the direction of that tree. Like so. And from here you can double jump circle boost straight to this fire point and skip the catapult hook. Now the casual route would be to jump like this. But you can jump straight to the hook already from this side by going right with the double jump circle boost as follows. So with the first jump I'm holding upright with my analog stick. 
and when I'm doing the circle boost input, I'm gonna switch holding directly left. So, in motion. After this animation, you want to hold 2 o'clock to go this way. And right after passing this corner, you want to single jump circle boost on this thief move platform. And then since Gala doesn't have rail sprint, we're just gonna simply walk on it for a brief moment. So this thing has like a total of five stripes. So after you have walked past the middle stripe, then you can double jump circle boost to the left on that rope like so. We can see that the intended route uses two of these trees here with fire bolts. And here's the hook that is intended to use, but we can skip that hook. So from this rope, jump off, run to this corner and do a double jump circle boost directly on that fire point. From here, you can do a single jump circle boost on this one. And from this vine to the next, do a single jump and then press circle, but do not do a circle boost. Do not press circle instantly after X. Space those inputs. Like so. Single jump circle boost here. And single jump circle boost to this final hook. So, let's try to do the entire thing for the final fire bulb. And after this final animation, you're gonna spawn as Sly back on top of the bell tower. Now I did say that the first and second fireball obtaining animation was unskippable, and so is this third one by default if you would get that in any other situation. But I guess because a checkpoint will load immediately after this final fireball animation ends, it makes it possible to ICSS this cutscene. So the ICSS from getting stronger in episode 3 are back and they will be back in episode 5 but in this episode this is the only ICSS that is known but this ICSS is very different compared to any other ICSS in the route because here pressing circle button literally right before is not an option you just press X and then just Galath flies into the trigger there is no precise audio cue there's no precise visual cue for this and and since it's not a requirement to press another button basically almost at the same time, this already makes this by far the hardest ICSS in the game. But what if I would also tell you that this ICSS is literally frame perfect, unlike the other ICSSs. After pressing X to do the catapult, you have to press start exactly 21 frames or 0.2. 383 seconds app in order to skip that fireball animation. One frame too early and you're still gonna get the restart checkpoint option and if you're timing this well like maybe plus minus two frames from getting the actual trick then it's not worth to try again because it's just not realistic for you to mash start after exiting the pause menu and still get it so just give up and unpause and watch the cutscene and if you were one frame too late well then there's not any kind of option to skip anything. On its own, this ICSS saves five and a half seconds, but going for it and missing it already loses like 1.6 on its own. So based on these numbers, we can calculate that you roughly have to get this skip at least 22% of the time. That's when going for it on average is worth it. But if it's below than that, like, one for every fifth attempt, you're gonna lose time to this on average. But if you indeed got the skip, then of course, choose the skip cinematic option and mash start, and hold 11 o'clock from the load, and try to squeeze past the corner of the bell tower and this uh, owl thingy. And after squeezing through, paraglide to the ground, and run through the same wooden bridge that you crossed as Mary in short supply, and keep running straight towards the circus tent area. Ignore the guards and uh, just run past these tents. There's three of them in total. And here, the trigger area for the cutscene, it's gonna trigger 
on the halfway point of that green grass area that is located between Sly and the Carny Owl at the moment. So that's how you want to anticipate the start button press. So indeed, run past this tent from between them, ignore the guard, and that's how you want to pause the game. And after that, skip a cinematic. We're gonna go to the Archer minigame. So you have about 1 minute and 30 seconds of time to collect 120 points by shooting targets. Now the stationary Black Knights are worth 2 points, then the stationary Porcupines are worth 3, stationary friendly targets are worth minus 2, and the moving friendly targets are worth minus 1. Moving Black Knights are worth 4, and the moving porcupines are worth 5, and then the dragon is 10. So prioritize porcupines over black knight models, but you're just gonna want to shoot everything that you see regardless. So only stationary targets are gonna spawn in this minigame during the first 30 seconds of it. The moving targets start to spawn when 1 minute is left on the clock. Then the first dragon will spawn when the clock hits 45, and another dragon will spawn when the clock hits 15. Shooting physics work a bit differently than normally with the archer costume, but what you basically want to do is to memorize all the locations where the targets are gonna spawn, and also memorize which targets are gonna move and which are not. Practicing this minigame is rewarding and fun at the same time, so I warmly recommend it. So what I like to do when no targets are visible on screen is that I like to aim on the center tower of this uh, castle portrait and always right after shooting one target instantly load another arrow never just wander around the screen without having an arrow loaded optimally you would be able to gather a total of 110 points before the dragon spawns and then finish the mini game by shooting the dragon so this means that optimally you would finish the mini game with 44 seconds left on the clock at a top level like a 40 is still good 36 to 39 is uh, kind of meh and below 36 is kind of bad for me at least but it has to be noted that in terms of target spawns this minigame does have latent RNG as well you can end with uh, 45 seconds left on the clock or more but that is extremely rare or requires some insane skills and also if you would be shooting targets equally fast but only black knights would spawn instead of porcupines that's also kind of bad rng because the black knights give less points so you want to get these porcupine spawns as much as possible and now to cap this segment off i'm gonna show my personal best in this archer mini game with 44.9 left on the clock at the end where I also did not have to shoot the dragon So when learning use this clip as a prime comparison after you're done, that also means that you're done with the job. Let's get back to the safe house, get ready for operation, and select Murray upon entering safe house. The next job is called Operation Mousetrap. From the load, you want to hold up and do the same kind of movement as you did in Shopping Spree, Cane Swipe, and the previous job, Hard Target, to the catapult. And just like in cane swipe, jump on the other end of it. We're trying to go as far as we can here. And over to the castle gates. Just run straight. And this is a chock tock chock trigger, so mash circle upon triggering it and not start. And this cutscene is also unskippable. Do not pause the game. See, it's unskippable. Do not pause the game, please. Just do not. Only thing you have to do here is to mash circle once directly right here. 
in order to open the castle gate. And then this unskippable cutscene transitions to a load. And after the load you want to mash start in order to skip cinematic. And now we spawn in the Black Knight or rather the Mega Knight boss fight. So the map of the area looks like this. It has a circular shape. We spawn on the left side of it, so of course we're gonna take that left tower first. But basically the movement of Sly centers around just running between these towers and shooting arrows. And please use this map image screen as an indication of where to run optimally. Like there are these uh, bricks on the ground, so you might think that it's optimal to run besides those uh, lines, but it's not. That's because the circular shape of this area gives an illusion that it would be the optimal route to take. When you're jumping on top of these towers, you're gonna get a rather high jump here, and you see that airtime that took place before we actually landed on the platform, and it did become possible to interact with the basket. Well, with the mid-air cane swipe animation, like this, we can cut that airtime short. So hold 9.30 o'clock from the load and keep that direction, single jump up and either ledge grab or cut the airtime with the mid arcane sweat. Shoot the arrows to the sides as casually and mash R1 in these sections. And now here indeed the optimal route is to run like this. Kind of unintuitive, but that's just how it is. Let's see what happens here. And it really doesn't matter which of these holes you use to shoot the arrows through. And of course, double jump circle boost on those ropes or rails in this case. It's not faster to switch out of the costume. So now with these traps here, you can see that they load based on your line of movement. We can abuse this to our advantage. So here, after shooting that second arrow, I'm first gonna bait the missiles to shoot a bit differently and adjust my line of movement just briefly so that the missiles would not spawn directly on my way. Just a simple flick of the analog stick down is enough. Quick. And there we go. Now, with this uh, final arrow, a cutscene will trigger instantly when the arrow reaches the core. So, anticipate the pause, and after pausing the game, skip the cinematic. Now we're gonna do the same thing again, but here Sly spawns directly at the middle. But I guess it's still faster to go left, just by a tiny bit. So hold 10 o'clock from the load, and keep your line of movement, and do the same thing again. Now here, when going to the second tower, the optimal route would still be the same that we did in the first phase, but it would be super awkward to dodge these, so that's why I still opt to do the more casual looking route to the second tower in the second phase, and repeat, bait, and there we go. And once again, another cutscene is gonna trigger, but this is slightly prone to sometimes lag a bunch, but here I actually got it the first frame, so I guess I ICSS it, so I didn't get the lag. But what you want to do is to start mashing start on the moment that you see that some kind of a lag has taken over the screen. So just skip cinematic here, and we're gonna do the final phase of this boss fight. The controls of this mech are insanely clunky, but thankfully it doesn't matter in this fight, and we're just gonna cheese through it by keeping it as simple as possible. So at the start of the fight, Black Knight is pretty far away from you, but we can reach her with two dodge attacks. They do spend the gadget meter, but it's not that big of a deal, since in terms of dealing attack, only the super attack does spend the juice, and the super attack isn't even that effective, and it spends all of your juice at once. So from the load, you want to hold up and mash X like this, and instantly after the dodge attack, start mashing square. And here, we can just cheese these attacks on the Black Knight 
by mashing square and start mashing square as soon as the Black Knight stops her own dodging animation. So when the Black Knight becomes stationary again, that's when you wanna start uh, mashing square. If you try to press square too early, that will happen, and the Black Knight will actually dodge your attack. So just simply repeat the same thing throughout the entire fight until this point. Now you see that the Black Knight's health bar is about on the same level as the left ear. So when there's only about the left ear's worth of health left on the Black Knight, that's when you know that the final set of your attacks is coming up. After this point, you're just gonna do one full attack pattern that punches the Black Knight three times from square. And after you see that the third punch has connected, that's when you want to finally press the triangle button in order to do a super jack and finish her off. After that, it's gonna take like a second and the climax animation for the fight will begin. And in that animation, all you gotta do is to mash square. The very last thing I'm gonna say is about a certain curiosity with episode 4. So in any other episode, the ending cutscene for an operation is unskippable, except in this job, except in episode 4 operation. So after the square mashing quick time event has ended, just simply pause the game and skip the cinematic. So let's do this. There we go, you're dead. Mash square. And there we go, skip cinematic option located. So, use that. And now we're actually gonna get a job complete animation. And instantly after this, mash circle in order to skip a cinematic. Now we're gonna head over to episode 5 and the same thing will happen again. Just simply skip a cinematic by mashing circle and that'll be it for this part of the tutorial series thank you very much for watching remember to like and subscribe and all that's a lot of stuff and we'll see you in the next one